Hello and welcome to this session, Robotics and Factory Automation. My name is Tobias Pütz and I'm working as a systems engineer for Texas Instruments. Today's session will be about how robots are used today, how it will be in the future, and what technologies are needed for this. Robots are already widely used in assembly lines in factory automation. Normally, robots are then used to lift heavy objects or repeat tasks very quickly and very precise. Typically, an industrial robot is surrounded by some kind of security fence so that no people can be near the robot and so no interaction between the robot and the human is there. Typical tasks for a robot can also be something like painting or pelletizing. Now with the new technologies evolving, also new areas for robots evolve. For example, out of a logistic robot can be used to carry objects from one place on a factory site to another one. But now this same logistic robot should also be used to not just carry the object on a known area, but really directly to the end customer. So it will be in an unknown area and needs some additional sensors for mapping and localization. Other new um, areas for robotics are for example in medical or also in service where they can be used as vacuum cleaners. Depending on the criteria that someone has, robotics can be divided into many different categories. For this session, it will just be divided between industrial, logistics and service. An industrial robot is typically a four, five or six axis robot which is used for the task which I just explained, so for example, painting. Normally, the robot is controlled by an external robot controller, which can also be controlling not just one, but multiple robots. A subfamily or a subcategory of the industrial robot is the collaborative robot. Now, there's a direct interaction between the robot and the human, which needs some additional sensors so that the person does not get hurt. As same as the normal industrial robot, a collaborative robot is also controlled by an external robot controller. A logistics robot is like the autonomous moving robot which I just described for carrying objects from a factory site to a customer. In addition to an industrial robot, a logistics robot will always need a wireless interface to control it and also it's battery powered. Last, talking about the service robots, these are probably the type of robot which is most known already and they also need additional sensors for yeah, um, scanning the environment around them. But in contrast to the logistics robot, the complete safety concept is less critical. The next generation of industrial robots is not only targeting for faster, more precise and more reliable robots, but also for more flexible robots. Flexible means that during an assembly of a product, for example, this product is then formed in a specific way depending on the customer needs or depending on customer wishes, painted in a different color. The other trend is that the human-robot collaboration is getting more and more attention in the industry. This means that we do need a lot of more sensors to really ensure a safe environment for the operator who is working together with the robot. For these new trends, three things are very important. Communication, motor control, and sensing. Communication does not only mean communication itself, but also signal processing. Let's take the example that a robot is controlling, the a robot controller is calculating data for a robot arm where it should move. Normally this data is transmitted from the motion controller over an ethernet interface to the n-axis drive or directly to the servo drive, which is then controlling the axis in the robot arm. The final position of the axis is determined by a resolver or an encoder and transmitted back to the motion controller or over an RS-485 interface. Already in this easy and simple example, we do use different physical layers and different interfaces. That is why it's important to have flexible communication controllers which can support multiple protocols. Especially this is the case because 
a lot of companies use their proprietary protocol but also want to be able to implement products from external companies. A good example for a flexible communication controller are TI's Citara controllers, for example, the AM3359. With this controller, it's not only possible to implement the widely known industrial communication protocols like Ethercat, Profinet or Powerlink, but it is also possible to implement a proprietary protocol. Motor control does not only refer to how many axes can I control with the same robot, uh, the same motor controller, but also how efficient can I do this. Efficient in this case means how much power do I dissipate, for example, because of switching losses. Switching losses are a big problem, especially for collaborative robots, because in those robots, the annexes or the switches are sitting directly in the robot arm which means that in case of an overheating, the complete robot might be necessary to be shut down. TI does not only offer the motor controller itself, which can create the PWM signals for the motors or the power stage of the motor, but does also have isolated IGBT drivers and field effect transistors based on silicon and also based on gallium nitride, especially the gallium nitride FETs are very nice to use because compared to FETs based on silicon, they have much lower switching, they have much lower switching losses. Last point, sensing. Sensing is very essential for every robot system, but now for the navigating uh, or logistics robots and also the collaborative robots, sensing gets even more critical. An example, a logistics robot does not only need one kind of sensor, but multiple sensor types to sense its complete environment. So for example, infrared, ultrasonic, and LiDAR. That is why a robot system today does not only implement the relatively simple sensors like capacitive or inductive, but also more complex sensors. To realize these sensor technologies, TI offers the complete portfolio starting from temperature, capacitive, inductive, magnetic, up to more complex technologies like Fluxgate, radar, LiDAR, or 3D time of flight, which gives you the chance with just using one single camera to get a 3D image where you get a pixel in-depth information for your complete picture. If you want to learn more about TI's portfolio in terms of robotics or want to learn more about the topic of robotics in general, then go to our website ti.com slash robotics. There you will find not just the portfolio and TI's position in robotics, but also white papers, blogs, and reference designs to help you create your robot system. Thanks for watching.